Uh, my name's Phil. Uh, I've been at Levi's for 15 years, a uh, long time now. Uh, uh, my main role at the business is product trainer uh, for the UK and Nordics, uh, and also kind of act as a brand ambassador uh, for the whole of uh, the, the brand. LBC uh, in Europe has been going for a while now. So it started in 1996, uh, but we've had uh, smaller collections that launched in Japan and America uh, just before we had it in uh, Europe. But 1996 is when we first launched our European collection. I think and with Levi's, we've uh, been going for over 167 years now. So we've got a lot of inspiration to pull and choose from. Uh, and sometimes collections are from what we have in our own archive. So we have an archive in San Francisco where we hold a lot of our original pieces. Uh, but, so inspiration can come from a lot of places. Uh, sometimes it's what's going on within the marketplace, but a lot of the time it's from uh, the product we, we have in the archive. And it will be based around certain movements that were really important to Levi's uh, and where Levi's was worn a lot. It's to kind of reproduce um, what we have in our archive uh, and staying true to that uh, and things that were really important to us in yesteryear. Uh, so a lot of the inspiration that the design team pulled from is from, from the archive and some of those social movements and whether it's being inspired from music, which has a real kind of uh, importance to us in the brand, uh, or it can be movements that really Levi's was a big part of. Uh, you've probably all seen iconic images of the Berlin Wall coming down and them all wearing Levi's, whether it's Woodstock and the majority of people wearing Levi's in the crowd. If they weren't wearing Levi's, they were naked, I've been led to believe. So Levi's has always kind of been there, but uh, the inspiration always kind of has to stay true to our roots and we try and replicate and reproduce what we have in the archive as close as possible to how it was made back then. Yeah, I mean, the archive is a great source that we have and we're very lucky that we've got such a rich history and we've been going for such a long time. I mean, for example, 501, which you have in Red Tab and which you have in LBC, it's still the world's most sold clothing items and nothing has outsold that. So we're very lucky to have all this inspiration and history, but as a brand, we pull inspiration from all over. So Red Tab will take inspiration from what is commercial, what is the trend, and also we'll have a look at what's uh, gone gone before for the brand. Uh, and at the moment, uh, that kind of streetwear 90s it is a big influence. And we had product at the time in the 80s and 90s that's come full circle and is in uh, fashion now. OK, so with uh, LBC and kind of what you want to buy in that, we offer our rigid jeans and we offer our seasonal washes. Uh, as well as washes will carry over. With the rigid jeans, uh, the ones we have in LBC are shrink to fit, so there will be some shrinkage in them. As well as the shrinkage, the indigo can run as well if they're not washed or cared for properly, uh, and that can happen quite a bit. Modern washing and the chemicals, and, uh, they can burn uh, the denim. So essentially, it's a white cotton and you've got an indigo dye attached to it, so it's gonna chip off and that's where you get the amazing fades and washes. With the rigid denim, I would always, it's, it's down to the wearer on how they want it. Some people will never wash them. They will buy them, they'll break them in, they'll never see a washing machine. However, the advice we give on the garment, on the product is to try and buy up a size in the waist and at least uh, two sizes in the leg because there will be some shrinkage. Naturally, the fabric will shrink when it's washed but we always try and advise, do not wash your jeans for at least six months. Allow it, the, the fabric, to kind of get used to your body shape. Um, but again, it's all down to the individual wearer. We know a lot of people on LBC will buy a rigid jean, never wash them, and they look absolutely amazing. I would like to say, try and keep them onto your body as, as long as possible. But if you are gonna wash them and that's what your end goal is, always go up a waist size uh, and also go up two sizes in the leg. We tend to find more shrinkage in the leg than we do in the waist. And then if you are gonna wash them, do wash them inside out, 30 to 40 degrees. Do not use a detergent because that can really burn uh, the garment. Uh, but yeah, if you are gonna wash them, try on to hold onto them for as long as possible, but go up one size in the Levi's waist and two sizes in the leg. It can be different for other brands, 
but that's what we advise from a Levi's uh, vintage jean. Think of the germs that could already exist on that jean. You're putting it into the freezer and it's freezing the germs. And then when you take it out of the freezer, they come to life again. So uh, yeah, unless it's kind of, you know the exact source where the gene is, it's not been taken out of its bag. You've literally got home, taken it out of its bag and put it in the freezer. Who knows where it's been? Uh, if you bought it in Stewart's, hopefully, um, and you can't around on the tube, who knows what kind of germs it's picked up. We have a rich history, as a lot of our fans and customers know, with Cone Mills, and it's a fabric we've used for over 100 years. Absolutely amazing fabric. We've now moved into a new era with production on Levi's Vintage and we're sourcing the fabric from Kaihara. We still have plants that make it in Europe, uh, but the source uh, of the fabric is uh, in Japan, which is really, really great to be using on Levi's Vintage. Kaihara is a mill that's been in existence since the mid 50s uh, and their production techniques are spot on to what we wanted for starting that new chapter on Levi's Vintage. So we had a great one with Cone. Also, not to give too much away, we will still use cone fabric going forward into the future. So we will do special product and special eras on our jeans, whether it's on a 501 or a different jean from our back catalogue that will still utilise the cone fabric. However, on the mass production we do for Levi's Vintage, it will be the Kaihara fabric. And that will be on our rigid garments, as well as the seasonal washes that we do. Um, similarity wise, uh, we think they're pretty similar. Um, and that's why we went with the Kaihara. But with Cone, there's that rich history we have there that you can never always repeat exactly. The looms they used, the shutter of the floor, the wood, and the whole kind of history that was ingrained in Cone. However, with Kaihara, we think we've got an absolutely amazing fabric that we're super uh, pleased to be using. Uh, and I think the, the customer and the fan will be really happy with the, the production of the, the new Levi's jeans going forward. I think everything needs to evolve, uh, no matter whether it's in fashion or not, things need to move forward and the world is changing rapidly out there. We will always have an association with America. So the design of the capsules, our spiritual home is San Francisco. That's where we started. Um, however, we will take inspiration for the collections, whether it's on Levi's Vintage, whether it's on Levi's Red Tab, whether it's Levi's Made and Crafted. We take inspiration from all around the world. Uh, but yes, America is our inspirational uh, home and, and kind of where the brand started. So there'll always be that kind of red thread going through the brand um, of that inspiration. Um, but we think with the new fabrics we're using, we always want the best for our customer. And we think they'll be really happy with the fabrics we're using and the production methods we're doing on producing that and trying to get as close to our history as possible. You've also got to remember that a lot of the machinery that we used when we created these products 50, 40, 30 years ago, they're not in existence anymore. We spend a lot of time trying to recreate it exactly, stitch to stitch, how it was back then. And we've even gone as far as making the machines again, just to make sure this product is exactly as it was back then. But it does become harder. I mean, we've been going for over 167 years. That machinery is very scarce now. And if we do want to buy it, does cost a lot of money. So again, we've um, done many 501s over the year. Um, it's where it really started for us uh, as a brand. What we tend to choose uh, are fits that are commercial, as well as fits that really meant a lot at the time of production. So fits that we have in the collection for spring, summer 20 are the 1947 501 the 1954 and the 1955. So we've got three different shapes there in the jean, but all very iconic at the time and what they stood for then. Also, they work very well now. So you've got a standard fit, essentially in uh, the vintage collection. You've got a slight taper with the 54 and you've got a more boxier, looser fit in the 55. So if I start with the 55, this was a jean that was common within Hollywood. A lot of bikers wore it as well. Uh, and it was a real kind of rock and roll jean. Um, the 54, again, that's got a slight taper. That's one of our best selling ones uh, that you guys stock. That's done really well for us. And it's quite commercial as well with how you can wear it with having that slight taper. And that's what a lot of guys look for now. And then the 47 is really the quintessential 501 for us as well. This was when jeans really were adopted as a fashion piece post second world war. 
and this is when Levi's really stamped its name as the rock and roll brand um, going forward. Well, what you guys have got, you've got the 551 and you've got the 505 and they're pre-shrunk fabrics. The 551 was the first pre-shrunk jean we did for men and that was the company, uh, the 557 jacket uh, that we did at the time. Now these folks turned up in our uh, price lists in 1961. Um, we had the first done pre-shrunk with women's jeans back in the 30s. If I'm giving advice to customers uh, and people who want to buy into the Levi's brand, if you don't want to muck around with shrinking or anything like that, go for a 551 or 505. If you really want to kind of have a jean and shrink it and have that personal identity to it, I'd go for a rigid jean and that's what you'll be getting for 501. So if you want something where the shrink fabrication has already happened and the process is already in the garment, go for a 551 or a 505. If you want something that you want to shrink and make unique, go for any of our rigid 501s within the Levi's Vintage Collection. So uh, the inspiration uh, for the collection still lies with our designer, Paul O'Neill. So it's not necessarily the inspiration come from Japan, that's where a lot of the fabric will come from. Uh, the inspiration he can pull and the team can pull from anywhere across the world, whether it's in America, whether it's in Europe, or whether it's in Asia. So the SS20 collection is coming from San Francisco, California. Previously, we've been all over the world uh, with the collection. Before Spring Summer 20, we had uh, the Beatnik collection, which was based around uh, folk music with Greenwich Village in New York. But we've looked at inspiration, whether it's come from cowboys, whether it's come from miners, and now we're really looking forward at European subcultures is something that's really important to us. But the DNA always has to lie with what comes from America and the inspiration from our home hometown. Main fix that you do for us uh, and that we provide in Levi's vintage clothing are one that I mentioned earlier. So we have the 1947, the 1954, and the 1955. Some people can wear all three and they look great on some people. However, if it's a specific jean and fit that you're after, 47 is our quintessential standard fit and one that's probably one of our best sellers within the collection. Very simple to wear, it is very much just a standard fit and quite similar to a 501 you would just find on the high street now and a 501 that you guys stock as well. It's probably the easiest one to get into and it's one I would start with with your customers. Get them into the 47. If that doesn't work and they want something a little bit more tapered and slimmer, you can go to the 54. If they want something a little bit looser and boxier, go for a 55. All three of them are quite roomy within the top block area. However, the 54 has the most taper of, among the three here. So if you want something a little bit more tapered around the ankle and a little bit slimmer, I'd advise the customer to go for a 54. If they want a more boxier fit, so the one I've got on is a 55, I would uh, go for the 1955 501, and that's a nice boxy jean all the way down. Uh, it can be worn by anyone, whether it's a slimmer guy or a bigger guy or even a girl. Um, but really just to sum it up, you've got the 47, which is your standard fit. Always get them in that first. And if they want something slimmer, go for a 54. Some get a little bit looser and boxier, go for the 55. And then also another fit that's really exciting for us to uh, have out in the market is the 93501. Now that doesn't sit in the vintage collection, that sits within Red Tab, and that's a fit that we're really gonna get behind. Basically is what it says on the tin, it's 501 from 1993. We have many versions of the 501, but this is one we're going to really get behind for this season. A lot of the washing you'll see in it is inspired from the 90s washes. So whether it's a nice light wash fade, whether it's kind of more of an acid wash, you'll be getting through uh, the 93 uh, 501 this season. The classic 501, we've also got 501 that sits in Made and Crafted that you guys are stocking. And then if none of those work, get them in the trusty 511, because that works for everyone. So a question we get a lot of the time is, what's the difference between Levi's Red Tab and the difference between Levi's Vintage? The difference between the two is, so we have a Levi's Red Tab jean here and we have a Levi's Vintage jean. The production and construction is a lot different. So traditionally on Levi's Vintage, we have smaller quantities of fabric and rolls of denim we can use. Uh, so traditionally kind of 30 or 40 uh, meters on the roll here. And also it's made on a 26 to 20 inch loom. We're using high grade fabrics, uh, which are hard to come by. 
and this is why the price uh, is slightly more on the Levi's Vintage Collection, because we're using really kind of niche old fabrics uh, that take a lot of time to make, and they're a slower process to make. On the Levi's uh, Red Tab Collection, again, really great fabrics we're using, uh, and great suppliers we use with this, but we have more fabric and more roll we can use, and there's more people who buy into it. Uh, Levi's Vintage is on the Selvage fabric that you can see on this jean here on the 1947, where this one isn't. The majority of the LBC collection is done on the Selvage fabric, so on a smaller loom with smaller quantities, whereas on the Levi's Red Tab uh, collection, we would produce more. And also from a Selvage point of view and the consumers we're targeting, it's more about the great wash and the fit that we work with on Red Tab. Whereas if we're staying true to our history on Levi's Vintage, our jeans were made on the Selvage fabric and that's something that we used for a long time going right up into the 80s and something that our fan always looks for. So you've got your Selvage on Levi's Vintage and you've got your non-Selvage on Levi's Red Tab.